Hello Twinkle Winkles, it is me Shimmery Simmer aka Luna, if anybody was wanting to know my name, there it is. And today we are back with some Sims 4. So in the last video, or the last upload I made, I made Carly Shay. I know she doesn't look exactly like Carly Shay, but she kind of reminded me of her, so I just rolled along with it. So um, this household is something that I play off camera too, but I'm also going to play a little bit off, I mean on camera, what am I saying? Anyways, so yes, I will be playing some of this on camera as well. I don't have the volume turned up in my game right now because I figured it would be fun to just talk and do some gameplay, but to catch you guys up, recently um, Carly has achieved level 4 in the writing skill and she has written for a total of 15 hours, and all she needs now is to write at least 5 good books. I think she's in the process of writing a book right now. Let's see how her mood is. Um, I guess it's- ooh! Where are some moods? I really suck at the Sims 4. Like, I don't know where anything is. Simology. Okay, here we go. Needs. Yeah, she's fine. Um, so we're gonna have her clean up this cake over here, and then we're going to have her- Probably write a book. Uh, let's see. Resume writing. Celestial Blue Heart is a book that I made up. I don't know what the hell it's about, but <laughs> she's writing it, I guess. So, um, meanwhile, while that's happening, I figured that I would talk about a little bit of true crime because I love true crime stuff. So, we're going to be talking about the case of Jodi Arias. This occurred back in. June 4th, 2008, I believe, and here's my take on it. It involves two young people, one man named Travis Alexander, who was killed by his ex-girlfriend Jodi Arias, and Jodi Arias herself, who committed the murder, obviously. This uh, case was pretty high profile, and I'm pretty surprised that I never really, I mean, I kind of heard of it as it was going on, but I didn't really know too many details until I watched this documentary with my mom on Discovery Plus, and I found the case to be rather interesting. I really love true crime stuff, and this case kind of just blew me away, so let's see, I have my trusty tablet here for information. So Travis Alexander was born on July 28, 1977 in Riverside, California. He was a Mormon and he was described as a pretty down-to-earth guy and he really stuck to his morals and his Mormon values. And then in 2006, I believe, he met Jody Arias at one of his talks or meetings or motivational speaking seminars, and Jody right away seemed to be pretty smitten with him. And you know how that goes, you know, pretty much like love at first sight, I guess you could call it. And they pretty much hit it off, and things started to pretty much blossom from there. I didn't really gain that much insight on this whole entire situation until I watched the movie called Jodi Arias' Dirty Little Secret. Um, so Jodi Arias was born on July 9th, 1980, and at the time of the murder she was like, I think, 27 or 28 or something like that. So I guess to dive into their relationship, I would say that they had had a pretty toxic relationship. I mean, it does take two to tango after all, in my opinion, but I really don't think that anybody deserves to die as cruelly and violently as Travis did. So basically, they were together, and from what I'm gathering from the movie, it could be you know, obviously an exaggeration of everything that happened, but I think that uh, Jody struck me as the type of person who really wanted to be loved and accepted for who she is, which is something that a lot of us want to be, you know, accepted and loved for who we are. But to what length will we go to in order to gain that acceptance is the question. So from my take on it, without looking at anything, I'm guessing that Travis just 
didn't see Jody to be fitting into his Mormon lifestyle. I consider Jody to be like probably have been a free spirited person who just wanted to take pictures because she was really into photography. So I guess she was like really artistic in that area and she, you know, enjoyed taking pictures and kind of having that free spirited life. While Travis was more grounded and a motivational speaker, he was pretty successful with what he was doing and I think that he was probably looking for a partner who shared the same beliefs as him which is why I think the movie was called Dirty Little Secret. It made a lot of sense because it doesn't seem like a lot of people knew that he and Jody were involved but his friends did and they always would say to Travis that Jody seemed kind of off and that they feared for his life and everything which they turned out to be absolutely right and correct about. But she has to use the bathroom or something or what? Okay, she has to pee. I just love that. True crime and having to pee. Okay, she's going to go pee. Go pee, girl. Go pee! Use the bathroom! Okay, anyways, um, but, um, what was I saying? Yeah. Back to Jodi Arias, um, she just seemed like the kind of person who just was like desperate for love and you know stuff like that. And Travis's friends were concerned about her behavior because she would act pretty weird, pretty bizarre, pretty you know off the charts for a normal person I guess. You know what would consider normal behavior wasn't normal for Jodi. And I kind of don't blame her in a way because you know it's like why didn't Travis necessarily parade around their relationship it was like he was using her for sex I'm going based on the movie remember that but um in the movie their characters did partake in sex a lot and um it seemed like Travis enjoyed that because Jody was basically like a forbidden fruit and like I said Travis was Mormon. I don't really know that much about the whole Mormon practices or anything, so you guys can correct me if I'm wrong, but he even mentioned in the movie, like, drinking coffee and stuff like that was bad because, you know, it develops an addiction, and he was pretty much addicted to Jody sexually, and he eventually broke it off with Jody. They were kind of on and off again and on and off again up until the point where Travis tried to break off the relationship permanently and then that resulted in his death and um, he sustained 27 to 29 stab wounds and he was killed in his bathroom and I think the most messed up thing about this case is the fact that Jody went over to his house and they made love and they took pictures and of course on the camera the digital camera that's going to leave time stamps and I think that was the biggest piece of evidence that detectives and police had to work with so they of course took that into consideration and they caught Arius and they had this trial which this trial was actually really really huge and um I don't know it's just like when I watched the movie they actually did show the actual stabbing and I actually did google the whole crime scene and everything which I don't recommend doing I kind of think that respectfully when you're into true crime like I am you probably want to steer clear of stuff like that but you know it's okay to be curious sometimes but sometimes curiosity definitely kills the cat but um it was a gruesome scene. Like I said, um, he sustained 27 to 29 stab wounds. He was slit in the throat and then he was shot in the head. And that is a horrible way to die. I mean, just imagine being stabbed so many times and then being shot. It's like he was probably more than likely already dead after she slit his throat because he was losing blood or he was probably already dead when he sustained those knife wounds because of course you're gonna bleed out and lose a lot of blood but I really think it was the throat slit that really killed him because you know that'll do it to you that's a lot of blood loss there but his death was ruled a homicide and everything of course and unfortunately his friends I believe discovered his body he was supposed to be going to Cancun and 
I guess since he never showed up, his friends went to his house, called 911, and freaked out about it, and they found so many things. I watched a little bit of the trial on YouTube, and it's pretty long, and it's a lot, there's a lot of information that is just here from what I'm looking at, and Jody said that she was abused by her parents, and that... I don't really want to get into their sex life, to be honest with you. But um, you can pretty much use your own imagination there when it comes to their sex life. Sex, sex life. But, you know, um, there was a lot of information that Jody revealed. She said that Alexander was secretly fond of young boys and stuff like that, which there was no actual proof or evidence that he was looking at child pornography, so I think that was a lie. And she also claimed that he was a bit abusive, which I kind of can't really say because I wasn't there during their relationship, obviously, but I can say that the text messages that they presented in court showed that he was probably a little bit, I don't know, aggressive himself, but like I said before, it doesn't warrant being killed, especially in such a violent fashion, and I just don't understand it. It's like, he, oh wait, he's over, he, oh never mind, he's coming over, this is our boyfriend I think, I don't know, but he's over at our house right now, so he's like, coming over because we need somebody to talk to. Uh, let's have our first kiss, I guess. I don't know. Maybe. But anyways, I think that this case was just like, it's, I'm still trying to wrap my head around it in all honesty. It's just really, really crazy and just really, really bizarre how it turned out to be like this and rather unfortunate that it turned out to be like this. I think that when your friend sent a red flag about somebody, you should probably listen and come in the house, Marcus. So stop talking to you now. I just invited you in here. Come in. Come in. Come in. Come in. Okay, you're just going to stand there. Okay, you know, I don't have time for this. I'm just going to take a nap on a couch. Whatever. Whatever. You're lost. I'm sleeping. Okay, I'm sleeping. But anyways, it's just really crazy. I would like to talk about this again once I kind of look at more information about it, but um, it's one of my cases that I am highly interested in looking deeper into and everything, but um, to tell you guys what's going on on this game so far is that Marcus is supposed to be your lover, I guess. It happened in the last part. I wanted them to be friends. Oh, now he comes in the house. Stupid idiot. Um, but, like, he's like our lover dude or whatever. So, he's like here. It's not like an 80s valley girl. Like, whatever. <laughs> like, okay. But, yeah, he's like here. And, you know, supposedly we like him, I guess. His name is Marcus Flex. Isn't he married or something? I don't know. I really don't know. I don't remember. I don't know these townies that much, but it's like, I think he's married or something. I, I don't know. From what I remember, he is married. I think I don't know. I honestly don't. But we should ask him, is he single? Are you single? Are you married? Do you have any kids? Like, what's the deal? Like, what up? What's up with it? <sighs> what's up with it, home? I don't know. They're talking about baseball and coffee. She's like, yeah, I love coffee. And he's like, yeah, I like baseball. Perfect couple. Hashtag couple goals. Oh. Marcus and Carly are having their very first kiss. Okay. We kissed. Yay. Have fun. So, that's great. So, let's chitty chat for a little while. Um, I don't know if anybody's going to get naked, but I do have an editor now so they can blur that out if that happens because I don't have the autonomy settings set on my um, computer for Wicked Whims and speaking of which I have to update that mod because I have to get the latest patch. Some people prefer not to play with mods especially this one but I like to play with mods because it makes the game just a little bit funner 
in my opinion. So that is why I am doing that, but I'm hoping that they don't randomly get naked. Okay, so far it doesn't look like they are. But um, anyways, I think I'm going to go ahead and stop this part right here for right now. Um, but I hope you guys enjoyed this tiny, teeny little part that I had. I definitely need to get back in the swing of recording things. Now that it's May, I'm going to be a little bit busy because I am taking a tease test in order to get into nursing school. Kill me now. But yeah, it's pretty ironic that I said kill me now and I just got finished talking about murder and stuff like that. What is wrong with me? Okay, but anyways, stay good people. Don't stab people while they're in the shower. Don't stab anyone at all. Be nice. Be lovely and take care. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye, guys.